Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095. This is section 7.7. .7. We're going to introduce factoring of trinomials of the form x squared plus bx plus c. The first thing I want to draw your attention to is the coefficients that we have here in this general formula. The coefficient of this term is 1. And this would just be some number, and this is some other number. So keep in mind that this coefficient has to be 1 for the methods that we're going to see in order to work. All right, so let's review FOIL. If I were to FOIL this out, we have our first term. We would have our outer terms. We would have our inner terms. And then we would have our last terms. So if I actually do that, x times x is my first term. and then my outer term is x times 3, which would be 3x. My inner term, negative 2 times x, is negative 2x. And then negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. So this was my first, outer, inner, and last. These are like terms, so I can combine them. x squared plus. 3x minus 2x is just an x minus 6. So when I FOIL this out, I get this three-term polynomial, which we call a trinomial. And we see it's x squared plus x minus 6. This coefficient is 1. My b value, if I associate it to that equation, is also 1 here. And my c value is a negative 6. So 1, 1, and negative 6 are these values coefficients. Now, what if I had this trinomial and I wanted to break it down? Just like we, if we have numbers, we can write them as their factors, prime factorization. Well, we can also do that with polynomials, trinomials especially. So if we have a trinomial, how do I go from here to here? Well, a term used is reverse FOIL. And essentially what you do is you look at, OK, well, I know that the first term when this coefficient is 1, a very important concept, is x times x. That's how we get x squared. Then I know the last term is the product of the last terms. So the product of the last terms, I have to figure out what actually goes in here. Well, my o and i is the sum of those common terms. So what I have to think about is, what are the factors of this number, negative 6? And I, just for practice sake, I'm going to write down all the factors of negative 6. I could have 1 and negative 6. I could have negative 1 and positive 6. I have to realize that this is a negative number. I'm going to write all the factors. We could have 2 and negative 3. And we could have negative 2 and positive 3. Since the middle term is the combination of the outer terms and inner terms, it's their sum or combining, I want to find the factors of this that sum to my middle term. So if I find their sum, once I have their factors, 1 times negative 6 is negative 6, I'm going to go this way horizontally and say, what would their sum be? 1 and negative 6 would be negative 5. Well, negative 5 is not a positive 1 for this coefficient. Negative 1 and 6 would give me a positive 5. Well, 5 is still not 1. 2 minus 3 would be a negative 1. This is a positive 1, but I can tell I'm getting really close. Negative 2 plus 3 is a positive 1. So the factors of the last term that when I combine the terms, I would get this value. So negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 2 and 3 would give me 1. So now I found these factors. I know that that's what goes in here. So the negative 2 and a positive 3. And if you notice what we have, x minus 2 times x plus 3 is exactly what we started with. So if we have a trinomial, we can actually work it backwards into its product of binomials, this binomial times that binomial. All right, so that may have seemed complex because we started here and we worked through using FOIL to get to here. But the key points when this value is 1, all we really have to look at is what are the factors 
of our c value, our last term, our constant, that sum to this coefficient. That's all we really have to look at. So let's actually factor this one. If we want to break it down and say, what two binomials multiplied together to give me this trinomial? So the first thing I'm going to do is write that. And I'm going to say, well, x times x would give me x squared. And then I got to determine this term. Well, what are the factors of 1? We could have 1 times 1, or we could have negative 1 times negative 1. Even though this is positive, a positive times a positive will give me a positive. But we also have to consider a negative times a negative will give me a positive. So which value is it? Well, I know if I sum these together, I would get 2. If I sum these together, I'd get negative 2. So of these two options, which one is it? It would be the positive values, because that gave me a positive 2. So this would be a positive 1 and a positive 1. Those two values, these are what I want to put in here. Now, this is a, a special product. And hopefully, maybe uh, we remember those from the previous lecture videos. A special product, we have the square of a binomial. And if we recall that formula, this was uh, the first term squared plus twice the product of those terms and the last term squared. So we could actually write it just like that. x plus 1 is multiplied by itself, so I could write it this way. Either way, this way or this way, is acceptable. Hopefully, we recognize that that's a special product. Sometimes that's a tool that's really going to help us be able to factor something. And we'll actually see that in its own separate section when we look at factoring special products. All right, let's look at some more examples. Um, if we look at this one here, we have x squared minus 8x plus 7. So I know the first term is x times x. That's x squared, x times x. What are the factors of 7 that would combine to a negative 8? Well, the factors of 7 are uh, 7 times 1, because it's prime, or negative 7 times negative 1. 7 times 1, if I sum those together, I wouldn't get negative 8. I'd get a positive 8. If I sum these together, negative 7 plus a negative 1 would be a negative 8. Those are the factors. So now that I've found those factors, negative 7, negative 1, I can put them in, and I can check my work. If I FOIL this out, I better get this back. x times x is x squared. Negative 7x and negative 1x would be negative 8x. Negative 7 times negative 1 is positive 7. So it does check out. All right, let's do it one more time to really be familiar with it. The factors of negative 7, well, negative 7, that means one of my factors would have to be positive and one negative. Different signs, it's going to remain negative. Or I could have positive 7 and negative 1. Negative 7 times 1, positive 7 times negative 1. Both would give me negative 7. Which of these two would sum to the middle term? Well, negative 7 and 1 would give me negative 6, so that one's not it. 7 minus 1 would give me a positive 6, so these are the factors that I want to put in here. So x times x is x squared, positive 7, negative 1. And if I FOIL that out, I'll get right back to this. So why don't you try this one on your own and see how you do. And make sure you FOIL your answer back out to check your work. All right, so let's kind of review the process that we did here. Essentially, the first thing we want to do is step one, write out two binomial uh, parentheses. We're going to put a binomial in here and a binomial in there. And the step is, because this coefficient is 1, x times x is x squared. So that's step one. Write your two parentheses with an x as the first term in each parentheses. Step two is find the factors of the last value, the c value. In this case, it's 5. And then find those factors that sum to 6. So if I were to list all of the factors, I could have 1 and 5, or negative 1 and negative 5. So 1 and 5, and I'm basically making a t table here. 1 and 5, negative 1, 
and negative 5. Now, which one of these sums to 6? It has to sum to 6. If I sum these together, I get 6. If I sum these together, I get negative 6. These are the ones I want, 1 and 5. So the last step is use the pair of factors that we found in the last step in here. So I'd have a positive 1 and a positive 5. Now, I just want to illustrate something. The order that we put these in doesn't matter, but their signs do. If I have a positive 1, I'm going to put in a positive 1. If I have a positive 5, I put in a positive 5. If it was negative, I'd make sure that these signs stay with their respective numbers. But if you had something like this, these are actually the exact same answer. And it's because of the commutative property of multiplication. It, let's say this is 3 times 2. Well, 3 times 2 is the same as 2 times 3. So the order really doesn't matter. So <clears throat> that's how essentially the three steps that we use to factor a trinomial where the first coefficient is 1. All right, let's look at a few more examples. We're going to really uh, hit it home, and hopefully we understand the process. My first step is I'm going to write my parentheses and put x times x to get that x squared. So my first term is the, uh, the value that's being squared here. Now, negative 30, well, what are the factors of negative 30 that sum to 7? If you're, if you're really good with your factors, and you can look at that and say, well, I know 10 times 3, and I know 2 and 15, and I know 6 and 5. If you know those factors, maybe you can do this step in your head. If not, don't hesitate to write a t table. What are the factors of negative 30? And list them all until you find the ones that sum to the middle term. So I'm actually going to skip this step because I'm comfortable with writing out or knowing the factors of 30. Well, the factors of 30 that have a difference of 7 would be positive 10 and negative 3. 10 times negative 3 is negative 30. 10 minus 3, or 10 and a negative 3, gives me that positive 7. So I know it's 10 and negative 3. If you don't see those factors right away, don't hesitate to write them out in a t table. All right, if I look at this one, I say, OK, well, what are the factors of 5? I could have 5 and 1. And I could have negative 5 and negative 1. That would give me a positive 5. Well, these are the only factors of 5. And if I sum this together, I get 6. If I sum this together, I get negative 6. Neither of those values is negative 7. This will happen. This is what we call a prime trinomial. So we just write prime. It does not factor. There are no binomial factors that we can break this down to. This is similar to when we had numbers. If I had the number 13, I couldn't break it down. It has no values. We call this a prime number. Well, if I can't break this down, we call it a prime trinomial. So we can just say, hey, that's prime. And that's going to happen, so be aware of it. And if you need to list out all the factors, sometimes you'll need to do that. All right, we're going to look at some different examples where we're going to combine what we covered in the last uh, section was the greatest common factor. When this first value isn't a 1, when it's some other number other than 1, the first thing we want to check is, can I factor out a greatest common factor? And a hint, you always want this first term to be positive, because we want it to be 1, not necessarily negative 1. So if I look at this, I say, OK, well, of all of these three terms, they're all divisible by 2. And I want this first term to be positive, so I'm going to factor out a negative 2 as my greatest common factor. Essentially, I'm factoring out a negative 1 and a 2. And when I do that, if I divide a negative 2 out of there, it gives me t squared. If I divide a negative 2 out of here, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. 20 over 2 is 10. And if I divide uh, a negative 2 out of this, it's going to give me positive 25. Now, if we look at this, we can say, well, what are the factors of 25 that sum to 10? Well, I know the only factors of 25 are 5 times 5. And to determine whether it's positive 5 times positive 5 or negative 5 times negative 5 to give me this positive 25, I just have to look right here. 
If this is positive, it tells me immediately that my factors have to have the same sign. This tells me which one it is. Because if they were negative, they would sum to a greater negative. If they're positive, they sum to a greater positive. So I know they're positive fives. Negative 2 times t times t. That was step 1 there. Well, actually, several steps in because we had a greatest common factor. And then we know it's positive 5 and positive 5. Now, this, if we recognize this, this is twice that. And that's a special product. That is a perfect square binomial. And we can rewrite it just to save uh, a little space on our paper. This is being multiplied by itself, so we square it. Negative 2 times the quantity t plus 5 squared. We factored this mess down to this little thing right here. All right, <clears throat> let's look at this. Sometimes we'll have extra variables in it. Here we have x's and y's. So the first thing I want to do is say, does this have a common factor? No common factor. This coefficient is 1. So let's attempt to do this. If I look at the first term, it'd be x times x. But I also notice another squared value. The last term is squared. Well, the last term would be the last term in here times the last term in here. How would I get a y squared if I have this term times this term? Well, they'd each have to have a y. So when I have two variables, I'm going to look for the first term being squared and the last term being squared and see, put them in here, the first term and last term. Now all I have to do is find out the coefficient in front of that. Well, the coefficient in front of this is 30. What are the factors of 30 that would combine to a negative 11? Well, this is positive, so I know their signs have to be the same. And this is negative, so if I have two values with the same sign and it sums to a negative value, they're both negative. So that's kind of a shortcut by assessing the sign. So now I won't make a sign error. The factors of 30 that combine to 11 are 5 and 6. 5 times 6 is 30. 5 plus 6 is 11. Negative 5 times negative 6 is a positive 30. And negative 5 and negative 6 is a negative 11. And if I really want to check my work, I can foil this back out. And I'll get right back to this. Now, notice a lot of the work I did here was mental, basically a verbal explanation. I wasn't writing it down. When you do enough of these, and this really takes a lot of practice, you'll get to this point where you'll look at it, and you'll just break it down into the steps and come right to its factors. All right. Another example. Here we have x cubed minus x squared minus 56x. Well, all the ones we saw prior to this were x squared or the first variable squared. Well, the first thing I want to do is look for that greatest common factor. Well, this has three x's, this has two x's, and this has one x. Every term has at least one x. So I can pull out a greatest common factor. And that's going to leave me with x squared minus x minus 56. And now I can say, OK, what are the factors of 56 that combine to give me a negative 1? Well, this tells me they have different signs, because it's negative 56, a positive times a negative. This tells me that the larger value is negative. So if I reassess that, what are the factors of 56 that have a difference of 1? Well, I know that 7 times 8 is 56, and they have a difference of 1. So let me write out my parentheses and say, well, x times x. And 7 times 8 is 56, and they have a difference of 1. Well, which one of those is the negative one? This tells me the larger value is always negative. Because if we combine two numbers, the larger value determines what its sign is. The larger value is negative. So if we have 8 and 7, and recall I said order doesn't matter, so I'm just going to put them in there. Now I'm going to assign the sign. The 8 is the larger value, so it must be negative. This one's positive. Negative 8 times a positive 7 is a negative 56. Negative 8x, positive 7x have a difference of 1x. All right, let's look at this one here. It's kind of a combination of where we have a greatest common factor, and we have two variables that are squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is recognize that greatest common factor, 3, 6, and 72. They're all divisible by 3. So I'm going to factor that out. And that's going to leave me with x squared minus 2xy 
minus 20, oh my goodness, 24y squared. All right. Now I look and say, oh, well, I have an x squared here and a y squared here. My first term and my last term is also a perfect square, y squared. And now I just look at the coefficient. I've got to determine what the number is. The factors of 24 that have a difference of 2, because they have different signs, so they're going to have a difference of 2. Well, I know 6 times 4 is 24, and 6 and 4 have a difference of 2. The negative here tells me the 6, the larger value, is negative. So negative 6 and a positive 4. So do enough of these, and you'll be there just like that. All right, so here's your first uh, attempt at this. I want you to try this one yourself. We have 2xy squared plus 4x squared y minus 6x cubed. Try this one for yourself. And make sure you check your work by multiplying it back out to get back to this. So this has been section 7.7. .7. Thank you for watching.